Definitely. You ready? Yes. Let's do this. We're in three, two, one. And we're live. What's up, everybody? Big Will. Little Dana. With Welcome a to the really K- dry throat. Welcome to the K pop <laughs> Afterbirth, the fastest growing K pop podcast in the world. Prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. I've um, never researched. There's like there's not that many st- specific K-pop podcasts. Oh, okay. <laughs> and and the the big ones are all like actually have like K-pop idols in them, so they actually have built-in audiences. Oh, and the other ones are just schmucks like us who talk about music and mostly sucks. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but today, as you saw on the thumbnail, we're going to be talking about a couple different things. We're going to talk about the Hynopia disbandment. We're going to talk about uh, ANS's sudden disbandment, the contrast and uh, comparison between those two. There's quite a bit to break down there if you actually think about it. And then um, we're going to talk about Choa again because she's fucking back, like legitimately back now. She signed with an official label. So, and whatever else we end up rambling about. But those are the three basics we're going to build this around. So join us, get your snacks, get your drinks, and chill. And uh Yeah. So you don't know shit about any of this stuff, do you? No. Well, I know about the Cho thing. I know. I told you. Yeah. I'm not familiar with the first two topics. It doesn't surprise me. I think most people, most people, if we're honest, most people don't know or care about ANS or Hynopia because they just haven't been around long enough. They do have, ANS actually has a pretty decent fan base, but um, it's more of a small following at this point, so it's not going to be like huge news. You know what I mean? It's not like Girls' Generation disbanded or something. Right. Um, so ANS actually, there's a couple reactions on Patreon, on our Patreon for them from me, Paul, me and you, I think, too. I actually liked a bunch of their songs. They had some decent music, and they were definitely sort of unique in the current newer crop of girl groups. Like, I liked them. They had a lot of potential. Um, and then Hynopia, I was kind of... I was honestly kind of lukewarm on them. I was a huge Priston fan. And then when the members came over, I didn't really like Drip that much. I didn't think the style suited them very much. But um, If I've seen their videos, I can't remember. But maybe if I... You probably... Based on I know about you, you wouldn't like the song. But oh, okay. um, it's one of those groups where they had a lot of potential. Uh, yeah. H- Hynopia did. And based... You know, just because they had a following. But the difference that I want to talk about, because everybody's whining about, you know, they're sad that they disbanded and everything. And I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not. I'm not sad that <laughs> they're disbanded. I, I mean, you're talking to like a second gen stan here, right? Second gen. I know you hate that word, so I'm going to use it as much as possible. <laughs> second gen, like Uber fan. And I have watched all of my favorite groups disappear. So I'm so pretty you're, fucking you're jaded cold at this point. And numb. I am like the only thing that would affect me right now is a pink or WGSN disbanding everybody else. It's like, it's like that one meme with a, uh, with a uh, James DeFranco about to get hung. And it's like, it's like the little, the tagline basically says like my favorite K-pop group is disbanded. And it's just like me about to be put in news. Like first time. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I've been through this shit. I've been through it. This it, it ain't nothing to me no more. And, and it, it, you know, it's let's bring this shit on. You know what I'm saying? Bring it on. I'm 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 here for the heartache at this point, because all my groups just they're gone. I know it's awful, except all the guy groups. They all just fucking managed to stay around <laughs> forever. It's only the girl groups that get disbanded. It's really aggravating. Definitely sexist and misogynistic. Yeah. And those words. <laughs> words and words and more words. So what what's interesting though, just to fill in the gaps for people that are interested but haven't looked. Um, and bother to watch like the one minute and 50 second videos that are up everywhere about ANS and Heine P with the robot voices that you know I love <laughs> so much. Um, so uh, we'll start with ANS. ANS disbanded. And from what it, it, there's a lot of misinformation flying around about it. It seems like the record label went broke due to COVID, basically. They were a smaller label anyway. They pretty much only had ANS and I think maybe one other thing going on, but. They went broke. They laid off most of their staff, including like ANS's managers. There was nobody to like actually like handle the group, plan anything, feed them. Like there was there was no money basically, <laughs> and they were a pretty big group. I think they were like I want to say nine to eleven members, if I remember. I don't remember the exact number. So you know that's a lot of mouths to feed. Yeah. Um, or starve depending on what agency you are. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they all of a sudden rumors started flying around about. Uh, that there was some bullying scandal because one of the members 
ended up in the hospital. She was like the youngest member, and it was like due to some bullying and some comments that she dropped on Instagram a while ago. And it, but then the clarification was no, it wasn't a member of the group that was bullying her. This wasn't like a Jim and Mina kind of thing. It was um, some of the, one of the staff members that was doing it. So mm. all of it's conjecture and hearsay, right? But uh, K-pop fans are young and they're just like immediately take the side of whoever. But it's a he said, she said thing. It's all it really is at this point. Right. There's no evidence or facts to the contrary either way. So, so when you take it with a grain of salt. Hospital, like emotion, for emotional distress? Or? I think it was both. I don't know if there was self-harm involved or what, but I don't know. I don't know. She was young. I think they said she was like in like 11th grade. So she was like maybe 16 or 17. I don't know. Oh, okay. Um, there was, but there was all kinds of that. Just like a lot of, he said, she said the, the label tried to, seems like they tried to pass it off that the, that it happened because there was bullying. It's weird though. Cause like of the, it's eight members. I'm sorry. Yeah. Eight members of the eight members. The only one that didn't cancel their contract because obviously they're not being fed. They're not being promoted. They're not being their, their dance studio was cut off. Like they didn't have access to any of the facilities, which was all a breach of contract. So they're like, well, we're dissolving our contract then. We're not a group. You're not here to do anything. And um, all of them dissolved their contract except the one who was the bullying one, which is weird. The one who was bullied? Yeah, who claimed to be bullied. Yeah, which is just weird to me. So obviously this is a brand new thing huh. and all the information is very conflicting and new. I'm sure it'll clear up yeah. as it goes. But. That's a red flag to me. I'm just like, wait, why would the one who was supposedly bullied not dissolve her contract? And the other ones did. It's like an attention thing. I I don't know. Not from her, but like from the, I don't know. It just seems weird. I I don't know. I mean, the other members could, there's already, when we were watching the one, there's a petition going around already to re-debut ANS. But... I, I don't know. It's uh, I'm sure we'll learn more as it comes as it as it the the stuff comes out. But um, I found it interesting more for the fact that the same day Hynapia disbands, and while you've got A and S and their record label like literally giving conflicting stories about what happened, and supposedly like their record label saying like wishing bad things on them, and on Hynapia on A on A and S. Oh. Really? And Hynapia is saying this, and it, it just seems like a really shitty situation. It's probably one of those like bad management. It's a small ass company. No, you know, they don't know what the, the fuck they're the doing. The managers were wishing the record bad label. Stuff that's what, the... yeah, that's what they said. I, I, again, oh. it's all hearsay. Not, I don't know if they, it's, it's all bad. It's all he said, she said. Um, mm. Whereas Hynapia disbanded, and it was the same exact situation. Like no money. There's no money. We're, the coronavirus, no debut, no money. Staff's gone. You have to disband the group. Period. But they release a the statement that's like, you know, your typical, we're sorry, we wish the best for everybody, we wish the best for the members, the, the, the typical disbandment thing. And it's just like, go their separate ways. No drama. It's like- What were the record labels? I don't fucking know. There uh, were two different ones, right? Yeah, yeah, two different labels, yeah. But they're just, you know- That is weird. Your shitty, you know, the, well, the Heinepia record label was specifically created for Heinepia. Oh. Because they were disbanded Priston members. So Priston- disbanded from um, Pletus, I think. Yeah, Pletus. And now they added them. They created, basically created a label specifically for them. And if their only product isn't doing anything, there's no money. Right. And your investors probably dried up too. So it's, it, I, just, I just found, the, it, the, I found the, the dichotomy between the two responses way different. I, right. feel, like, I feel like if there was Sweet. money... Heine Pia and the management, because they had a more professional kind of vibe from just from the from the way they parted ways, mm-hmm. they probably would have done better if it was better circumstances. Whereas the other group, I think if that's how the management was being Doesn't perceived by the good. group, and if that's what's coming out of it, if that, it would have it was ine- it was bound to fail. Like it was inevitable that it was going to fail. So it's probably better that it failed now instead of more and more shit building up. Yeah. And then you have a Jim and Mina from AOA situation where it's like big scandal, 10 years of bullying. <laughs> ah, like all that shit happens. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know. Yeah. It's really hard to comment when you don't really know the whole truth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I think it's also. It's pretty much just the in the majority of like the Korean music scene. Like most of the record labels are like medium to small. Most of them don't have any money. And 
they go under all the time. And in a time like now, when like half the world's shut down still, it, yeah. you, you know, if you're already operating in the red and just barely scraping by every month, it's, you're done. Like, uh, yeah. If you if your business model is that shitty, you're done. <laughs> it's not going to yeah, take I much to make you sink. Things going to work. Which, <laughs> which then brings me over to Choa because she just signed with, what was the name of the company she signed with? Signed with Great M Entertainment. I've never heard of them. Um, but from what I understand, they got a little bit more money than most. I don't know if they're just, maybe they have a rich owner or something. I don't know the details, but, um, you could have another situation there where like, they're hoping that she's going to be their cash cow. Right. Or at least, you know, open the door kind of like, um, like Chung Ah, like she comes from a nothing record label, but blew them up. Right. Like she made them a shit ton of money. I'm, I, I would not be surprised if they release like an actual group soon because they have the funds now. Rain- yeah. Rainbow, or was it Rainbow? I don't remember the whole name of it. Whatever the label is that Mama Moo comes from. Also, nothing. But now they've got another group coming out oh, yeah. soon. So like, it only takes one group being a big hit. Like BTS, like they've barely had any other groups except TXT. They tried the girl group thing and that, I'm sure many of you know about the drama around that shit. Um so now they just, instead of creating new groups, they're like, yeah, we're just going to fucking buy everybody. <laughs> so, so they've been buying up all the shittier, smaller labels. And yeah. maybe with her being so <clears throat> well known too, it'll, it'll have a little more say in like what she does. I have no you know doubt. What I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like sh- she can come in on some of her own terms. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that she, cause she met with multiple labels and she shows great M. Like I'm sure she, I don't know who she met with, but. I have no doubt, like, if I was coming back after having to be in the environment that apparently she was in for so long with, um, what the hell is the name of, what's the name of AOA's record label again? All these damn record labels. Hold on. AOA's record label. <laughs> like SM. No, and that's it's not, it's not going to work, piece of shit. But either way, uh, here we go. What is the name of this one? FNC, yeah. FNC Entertainment. So, um. I, I, if I was her, she probably went in there with like, "These are my demands." Yeah. Um. Uh, obviously, some give has to be on both sides, right. but it's probably going to be like, "I want more creative control." Yeah. I want to select and kind of figure out what my own how I'm going to present myself is going to be. I'm curious like, to see. How I'm not seeing her come out in mini skirts and booty shorts again. I'm seeing like a more like ballad oriented. That's kind of what I think. Cause that's, I think when she would do her own solo stuff and she would do stuff, that seems to be what she would gravitate more towards when she was in AOA. Yeah. She always wanted to do like more like chiller kind of different style from what AOA did. I suspect that's what she'll do. Yeah. She can sing. Yeah. I am really curious to see. Like her, her whole thing when she comes out, like yeah. what it's going to be like. I, I think she has to be careful because when you think of Choa, you have a very, you, that is what you think of. You have a very specific like image in your head of the image that she built for so long in AOA. And unless you saw all of the, the like concerts and the side stuff that she did. you I've seen some of the. This, like where she's been on shows or whatever. Right, variety and so, shows and stuff like that. For me, like that's not exactly what I see because she seems like... Right, but the lay person. Like no, the person I know. That, like, I, I know. just like, I've heard of AOA and I saw a couple of their no, songs. That's Choa to them. Right. Short blonde hair and tiny clothes. Like that's Choa to them. And she All can sing. All of them wear tiny clothes. Well, yeah, so. but you know what I mean? Like yeah. if she, um, my, the reason I'm saying that is because I feel like when she comes back... She's not going to do that. I feel like she's going to go for like a more like mature, mature, more elegant kind yeah, of thing. That's what I with think. With like ballady songs. I, if she's, I wouldn't be surprised if she only did OST songs and you never actually see her face again. Like she just sings on, uh, on TV shows and mm. shit. So, cause there's a lot of money there. If you get a big yeah. hit, like Ailey did Goblin and just like, I'm sure that song made her a butt ton of money. So, mm. but, um, I'm curious to see what she does. Like, I feel like she has to be really careful, and I say that because most most casual fans are going to expect that. And if they signed her, what are the expectations from the label? And f- like, I, I, I hope I doubt their expectations are like we're going to have like 
lots of money from this. I feel like if you don't do that mainstream K-pop thing, you don't get a lot of play. Right. And yeah. you, you you build like a nice cult following. You can sell a lot of albums, yeah, but you're not going to get the same kind of like free marketing. You're not going to get the same kind of exposure you right. would. You can just look at somebody like Hyorin, who came back with Dala Dala, and it was fresh off of Sistar, so it got more a lot of attention, and it was a good song. But after that, like her sequential releases have all kind of tapered off in terms of anybody caring about them, really. Um, and she's had some good songs and bad songs yeah. in there, but it's never been like Sistar levels of popularity, despite the fact that she continues to take more and more clothes off. So <laughs> it, I'm just going to say it like it is. I'm not no, saying it's bad or good. Don't get all butthurt. I'm just saying that's what's happening. And her last song, Nine Lives, in which she did not do that, was far superior than her one that she just dropped the other day called Say My Name, yes. which was just kind of <laughs> meh in my opinion. But Nine Lives was actually a really good song and it was actually all in English too, yeah, which is also good. something I generally don't like with my K-pop, but that's good. Uh, it was good. And I'm, I'm really curious to see what Choa does. Like I, I want release dates. I, I want to see like is the teaser photos. Do your research. I feel like Choa, she could, she could walk the tightrope and do like the um, excuse me kind of vibe. Like that fifties right. classy yeah. kind of style, yeah. Where it's still like it's. I think it, the first the first go around, she would have to do that. I feel like from a marketing perspective, because you want to appeal to that original AOA right. fan base, where they see something that they are familiar, familiar with, yeah. <laughs> and they're going to be like, "Oh yes, I I need this." So that at least yeah. you, at least you start to pull that fan base in, and then you can branch out. But if you come back with something that's just like totally foreign, yeah, uh, people are going to be like, they might be interested. But I feel like it's risky to do that. Yeah. And if you're trying to build that new fan base while pulling a new fan, old fan base back in with you, especially because AOA is pretty much down the tubes now. So you've got a, a whole fan base of AOA that's like, the fuck? <laughs> like, there's nothing there anymore. It's all drama. Yeah. She has a chance to recapture that big fan base. Right. But she has to be careful how she plays yeah. it. So I'm, I'm curious to see what happens there. Yeah, it'll be, and she's uh, she has like such a unique voice too, like a really good and unique voice. So she has a unique voice, unique presence. Just, yeah, you know, really take advantage of that in a good way. Yeah, for sure. I hope that I hope that they put money into it. Yeah, I just hope it doesn't. Yeah, like of course she could sing ballads and she can sing, so it would be good. But I think she does need to have some other songs that not you know nothing crazy but hopefully not all ballad because she does have such a unique sound that she can do like what you were saying a little bit of that like vintagey sounding stuff mm -hmm. or retro or whatever right but, yeah i would i would hope that she actually came back with at the very least a mini album and not just a digital single they do that shit sometimes to like test the waters where it's like oh it's her first it's her digital oh, single so you can't and really it's like, get no, a let's not do vibe. that. Let's do at least a six song album. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't want three of them to be like Choa covers original AOA songs. Like, no, I want I want to know what she's gonna be doing. Right. I want I want <laughs> yes. to get a vibe of what she's gonna be doing. I want six original new songs and I want them to clearly present the product that she's trying to present. Yes. I don't want like beat around the bush shit. I don't want like Oh, she's trying eight different concepts to see. So I'm gonna throw shit against the wall and see what sticks. Like, no, no, I want something. I feel like her, like sh she, she's not gonna do that. No, she's been in the industry. She's smart. You can tell she's intelligent, mature. Mm -hmm. She knows what she wants to do, and I hope works out and from a lot you of know the, what i mean like i feel yeah. like she wouldn't just come in willy-nilly like throwing stuff out there that's not good Hopefully. i don't think so either no i'm just throwing the options but out there you never know because sometimes <laughs> you are like disappointed <laughs> with what happens you know yeah sometimes people come out and you're just like oh that's like not what i thought or yeah. what i was hoping for so <laughs> yeah i think i don't that know i feel like maybe she actually is kind of smart in that sense like 
From well, from what I I just get vibes off of her like that. Agreed. Yeah, I think she's not just a pretty face. I think there's more to her than than yeah. than, than meets the eye. But I, I know that from like a lot of the reports and stuff that like the the other group members in AOA said that she was always the one who was like very demanding, like mm. or like the one who drove. I think I think she was the de facto real leader of AOA in, in terms of like making them practice and the one that drove that kind of like work the workhorse kind of mentality um mm. because i don't care what anybody says aoa died when Shoah left and i don't yeah. just mean that because she was my bias and like whatever like they were not the same group yeah they did had a totally it just didn't feel the same yeah and some people disagree because like oh i didn't really like Shoah. she was the least person like that's fine whatever huh. that's subjective but yeah i think if you if you actually look at the the old body of work versus the the when they were she was gone it was very clearly missing a large component and it was and you can you can see that in the overall numbers performance of of it in general but what i think is interesting though is that she's been gone so she left right before the k-pop explosion really occurred right like the boom where yeah. it really took off. You mean like in the West? Yeah, where you thing? got a lot more. We yeah. got a lot more foreign fans coming <clears> in, <throat> and the and the fan base is larger, and they have different expectations of what their K-pop sounds like in mainstream. So, it's going to be interesting to see how the new fans, who, in my opinion, are kind of fickle, um, because they're like, you know, will they even pay attention to it? Because it's not Blackpink twice or BTS. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, it's not somebody from SM Entertainment or yeah. or JYP. And, like, it's not going to get the same kind of play. Because there's, like, fans that have been around for a while. Fans that are here for the actual music and not just because it's, like, a fatty kind of thing to them. They tend to, like, actually... And, and the fans that like Korean culture and are drawn to that aspect of it, they tend to go deeper. And they look for, like groups and idols and, and stuff that's like not that's off the beaten right. track yeah. and, and there's nothing wrong with it either way i'm not trying to say there is like if you're surface no, level because a lot of people got into it because certain things became popular yeah. so yeah and that's, that's how fine. they got introduced in that but but i'm my, my my only point is i don't know i'm curious how they respond i'm i feel like yeah I mean, if I it's don't... not a flashy typical like if the video doesn't look like jenny solo where it's like, you know, just really high end and, and lots of money's put into it. I can't picture that Is anybody going to care? I can't either. I can't picture it come. Yeah, I can't picture that being. I wouldn't be surprised if Choa came out with a guitar like she used to, oh, like yeah. back in the day. Like she, like almost all of her live performances. like. So she, she really played, actually. She really played. Yeah, yeah, she actually played an instrument. So I, I wouldn't be surprised. Like, to see her sitting on a stool in a dark room with a light on. Yeah, I mean, I don't think that when she comes out or debuts or whatever, it's going to be, like, an explosive, like, everybody watches it It will be thing. at this channel. <laughs> but, you know, I know there's, like, fans in here and stuff, but you know what I mean. It's not going to be, like, the the hype that some of these other bands... Yeah, groups and, came and you know out what? With, which a, is to fine. me that works in her advantage. Yeah, because to yeah. me, hi, all the hype that surrounds all this shit, yeah. all the hype that surrounds like I think then the latest BTS that, drop, yeah, the Twice drops, the yeah. the Black Pink drops, it's so much, it's so much flash and no substance. Yeah, like these big groups that like, and it's it's kind of their own fault because they've gotten so big. They continue to have to outdo themselves, like visually, yeah. with the spectacle, like especially Blackpink, that is like their music has suffered. Yeah, I and agree. in my opinion, and if you because if you go back to their old style, it Blackpink has always it been was consistent. Always flashy, it's always but... been consistent. They haven't changed what they do. It's yeah. just bigger. Yeah, and like that's why one of the reasons I still like Blackpink as a group is because they didn't like alter what they are to suit a Western audience. They've always been that. No, I. I... I agree, but I I do feel like it's becoming like the, a lot of flash. It's all and flash. Not, it, it, when at you, least like the for me personally, of course anybody else can love them and they do, but just the style of music is I'm a little I'm not that's not my thing anymore. I could vibe really. with it if it's done right, but again, if there's if the the song doesn't have a lot of real if the if musicality the, even that it's like if you catch people in the right mood sometimes you can dig like uh like how you like that nah, nah, nah. but like when the last 
45, 50 seconds of a song is do, 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 do. It's like, wow, that's some serious filler. Like, we're not the youngins we used to be. It's, but that's what they said. That was literally them saying do, 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 do. That was the end of the last song for like 35, 40 seconds. And it's just like filler. Filler. It, it, don't yeah. pretend like its song is deeper than it is. Like it's just a club banger is all it is. <laughs> the latest BTS song is just another sort of sort of mess song to me. It's not bad. Yeah. It's not bad. But it's the BTS is so much hype around them. Like I, I think at seven o'clock this morning when I went into work, I I saw it in my you know my recommended feed. It already had fifty one million views. Whoa. Yeah. It's it's gonna definitely gonna smash some kind of record again yeah. like they always do. But um, you know you, what happens? I think is it's, uh, talking about the hype. Same thing with Twice. You get all these people that hear about it, right? And then the hype spreads, and then yeah. more people watch it, and they come to it. And then there's the hardcore fans that are like, yes, they have the biases. They're attached to this group. I get that. I'm the same way about my particular groups that I'm like that about. But so you get you get blinded by the bias. I understand, but. You have to step back from that and you see that not always is it as good as you perceive it as. That's just the reality <laughs> of it. Like if somebody else is like, I don't get it, meh. It's like, okay, cool. You have to accept that because they don't feel the same way about the group that you do. And you get new people into that kind of thing and the, the hype builds them up to this level where they're expecting this like next level shit and then they don't get it. So they're like, yeah, that's good. But you're not, you're not building a new fan. See, you're I'm not so creating somebody who's going to be like attached to it or spend money. I'm like opposite, I think. Like I'll be like, I'll love like a group or have like a bias. Maybe I'm just not a true fan. No, but then like they go bigger and crazier and then they lose me. That's oh, happened. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's happened sometimes to me. Yeah, and, and I think that because it plays like against them in the long keep, run. They like try to go more and more and do more stuff that is like so different from where they started, and I don't like it sometimes. Yeah, it, it, it yeah. happens to like everybody. But that's just me, maybe. The, I don't the, know. the biggest stars, they always end up going, like you look at the Western stars, they go down the same track every single time yeah, they start out they all sweet outdo they're relatable and, and then they get they have to outdo the videos have to get sexier and they turn sluttier and then it's just like all right we get like it go go sudden, boots like, porn star is, heels yeah. and body suits we get it like we get it you're at the end of your career your music is terrible and you have to show more ass to make anybody give a shit i mean because like think about it when the videos get to that point the lyrics aren't good there's like nothing with the lyrics. Like no. people want to pretend like it's powerful and empowering. Yeah. It's not. It's not. And it's I could write And sometimes that song. sometimes you want pointless music and that's fine. Well, yeah, that's fine. But don't pretend but like it's not pointless music. Stop acting like it's deep or something. <laughs> yeah. Um but uh, to bring it back to the to the hype thing is I think that that when you get to like if if Cho's comeback was to get super hyped like like oh my gosh, it's going to be rah, I feel like it would let everybody down. That's true. Unless it was absolutely epic, which, I mean, the odds of you know, a song that becomes you know a viral hit across the globe, it's not going to happen. It's just so minuscule. Yeah. It's, not, it's, it's not like <laughs> She's going to have a, um, it'll probably be a decent song or really good depending, mm -hmm. but it's not going to like, you're not going to be. Gonna, I can't see it having like horns, like, eh, 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 like <laughs> all those, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. It's got to have horns right now to like really get the hype going. It, it does. It has yeah. to have some fucking horns. It has to be like really intense. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just, uh, I look forward to it, but I found myself with all these, with certain groups having so much hype around them, I gravitate away from that like you do. <laughs> um, I, I just, I, it's like, I instinctually know, I'm like, nope, I know what it's going to sound I'll like. I'll check that. it out. Like we, we did our reaction to the new BTS song. It's up on patreon.com slash Kpop for life. Shameless plug. Um, but I, I, I just, I, you know what you're going to get. You're going to get either a mixed bag or you're going to get that type of sound that it's like, it's okay. But, uh, you know, it's like the like twice black pink. The only one that's still, honestly, the only group. That's that has those big expectations of them 
that actually delivers more than they don't deliver is Red Velvet. Mm. Like, I have a mixed bag relationship with them. Sometimes they suck. Sometimes they're, like, my fucking favorite song of the year. Like, they Which did... One? Red Velvet. Which song? Well, like, Really Bad Boy, I want to kill myself when I hear that song. It's okay. so bad. But then Red Flavor... Uh, Psycho. I love Psycho. Some of their older stuff before they brought um, Yuri on or whatever. Like you're in. Um, they just they, it's like it's like every other song for them is a banger for me. And then there's another group of people that are like every you and your o- lingo. What you and your K-pop lingo? A banger. I will never use the lingo. What's wrong with banger? That's not that's, a K-pop that's lingo. lingo. No, that would have been bop. That's lingo. If I said bop. A banger is lingo. A banger's been around pre-K-pop. Oh my gosh, you've never Also, used a it. banger is like a, a way that they say like bangers and mash. It's like a, a term for sausages in England. Yeah. But <laughs> still, that's been the new lingo lately. Okay. Well, I'm just saying. <laughs> of the groups that have that kind of hype around them, I'm just giving I feel you crap. like Red Velvet is the only one that will live up to that. For mm. some reason. And it's because they don't overhype a lot of their, their videos and the fan base doesn't do it either. Mm. Like the, 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 the Reva Loves, whatever the, the terrible fan name that I don't understand why. They should have just been called the Cupcakes because then you could have called them the Red Velvet Cupcakes. Yeah, I'm picturing like something like cake. like cake related. Something cake. It pisses me off. Yeah. The but that sweet, aside. The, the sweet. The that sweet aside. Cakes. That fandom is, it's, it's kind of in the middle for me. Like they have. They're not, they're not, they don't have like, there's some of like every fandom. They're like, there's some assholes and there's really cool people, but they don't tend to go overboard like the other fandoms do. And so I don't have the, the negative relationship between the fandom and the group, like yes. army and BTS or once is and twice or blinks and black pink. Like it's hard to separate those obnoxious elements of the fandom to, to the group sometimes. So it does tend to cloud my personal opinion yeah. on them. And if anybody says it doesn't, you're fucking lying. <laughs> <laughs> so. That's, oh, I thought you were going to say no, something. No, no. All right. Well, anyway, we just wanted to jump on, talk about this kind of stuff, do a quick podcast for you guys. We hope you enjoyed. Uh, if you want to hear 400 other videos, I think it's up to now. There's my 400 gosh. other videos on patreon.com slash Kpop for life. Um, and also a little community form in there. People who are like, you can talk and express yourself and not get fucking attacked for every little different opinion you have. So feel free to join us over there. And um, also keep on popping, K-poppers. Remember, it's not a trend. It's a lifestyle. Deuces. I bow to no man. This is Marco Tessa. This is Marco Tetsa.